Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Bodacious Friend. Okay, never mind. I can't do it. I'm trying to be like Kratos, and it's just not working. What's up, everybody? This is obviously Burn and Rye, and um, I try to put on my God of War face, but and voice. It's just... It's too weird. I can't be that quiet. Uh, I, I'd have to be a, such a dark person to do that. But, obviously... You just have to work on your best boy. <laughs> boy. Kind of. I think I, 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 think I would rather be uh, Balder or... Or Thor. I think those are those are my favorite characters. But as you guys have guessed it, and obviously you've read the the title and seen the thumbnail, we were talking um, spoilers of God of War Ragnarok, and I know it's a little bit after the game came out, but I take my time. I, I can't help it. I, and also, I have my addiction to um, other games, so sp- specifically Call of Duty. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so right now, Burn and I are just going to talk about our non-spoiler thoughts, just uh, give our ranting, and then we'll go into spoilers in a little bit. So, you know, you guys can stick around. But uh, this is obviously the sequel to 2018's God of War, and um, basically their uh, Atreus and Kratos are continuing their journey on discovering who um, who Atreus is true, what his true origins and his like future is, along with going against... Uh, the Norse gods, which is, it gets way heavier, literally. So, and this is, I mean, it didn't win game of the year this year, but it is easily my, another favorite game of mine. And God knows how long, like uh, campaign wise, just gameplay, everything, story, just fantastic game. What did you think of this one, Burn? Yeah. I mean, like this, this game had a lot to live up to, you know, like with 2018's God of War, you know, that one did, you know, when, when game of the year at the game awards, the, the year came out, um, very surprisingly too, because that was the same year that Red Dead 2 came out. And, and those two games were kind of like, you know, back and forth on which one was like better in winning awards and stuff. And, and this year's a lot the, uh, the same with, you know, this game and, uh, and Elden Ring that, that came out this year, which was also great. So yeah, I mean, like th- it's a tough year, you know, uh, in games like there's a lot of good ones that came out this year and again like I said it's 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 a tough it's tough to follow up like what a lot of people have considered a perfect game in 2018's God of War and I think uh, it it followed it up incredibly like I, again I was I'm one of those people that really loved the 2018 game and thought you know this is probably one of my favorite games of all time and you know but i know there's another one coming and, and like what is it gonna do to possibly you know match up to or even top you know the the, the first god of war and, and man this this game totally did dude like at every turn it, it was just so surprising and and how well executed it was i mean to top it off the graphics are amazing but you know besides that i mean we already knew coming in that this game was going to look good but it plays so well that you know it builds off the foundations of of 2018's combat and adds so much more variety and and in terms of like you know the abilities and the enemies that you fight which was a, which is a criticism of, of 2018's game but when it all comes down to it, dude, the, the story in this game is just so amazing with how, you know, this game is huge. Like, this is a really big game, and it almost makes a 2018 uh, this game feel sort of like a prologue. This feels like, you know, this is the real meat and potatoes of, of this story that takes place in this Norse realm. And, and you know, the journey that, that Kratos and Atreus go on is just so incredibly well executed. And, and all the other characters that, that come into play are all really well written and and well done and man i I couldn't have asked for a better entry into the god of war series and a better game to cap off this this norse uh this norse saga that they that they started in 2018 that's basically everything i had to say so thank you for uh taking that out of my brain so i appreciate that burn but no in all honesty it was it's definitely one of the few games that beats uh, that does beat the original like last of us 2 is up there with it um, I'm trying to think of another sequel. Can't think of one as of now. Oh, actually, Red Dead Two. That, those are the those are the top three um, sequels ever made, like ever. And I know there's been debate, not debate recently, but people are questioning what is the what are what set of characters, what game defines PlayStation for you, like of all time. And those are the three games that come to mind for everybody, well, at least for most people, especially if you're into like single player, like you know open world kind of game so um right out the gate i'm just gonna say this is a five out of five it's it's such a perfect story a great continuation of the original while escalating everything without losing the integrity of the story and the characters 
and um, just refined gameplay, great adi great additions in certain aspects to it to make it feel a little bit more complete. Um, I think you said it perfectly that the first game does feel like a longer prologue, and this is the real epic story that they were trying to tell. So, um, yeah, that's that's mine, man. Five out of five. So ten out of ten then. <laughs> ten out of ten. Do... I'm sorry, Burn. We're... Yeah, no, we're doing ten. <laughs> I'm still used to us doing movies and stuff. This is, in my defense, everybody, this is only our second legit uh, video game review. But yes, ten out of ten without question. Yes. Sorry, Burn. Only, only second of many. Hopefully, you know there's a lot of great, especially in 2023. There's a lot of really good things to look forward to. But you know, to cap off 2022, um, yeah, this this game is is incredible. It, it's it's my personal uh, game of the year. I mean, I loved Elden Ring too, but admittedly, I'm a little bit more partial to you know the narrative driven uh, single player games. You know, that one was more of an open world RPG, and that one was excellent. You know, I would also give that game a ten out of ten too. But like I said, it, it just comes down to to a matter of preference. But I mean, this is this is about as ten out of ten for a narrative you know single player game as you can get, man. Like the story at its core is amazing. The characters are so well done, and like I said, the the, the combat and and the side missions are all all really well. Well, I mean, just just polished is is the way to describe this game. In terms of like bugs, I, 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 only, I never, I didn't really, I, I encountered one, but it was like very minor. That like I was like not sure it was even like happening when it was going on. So just you know for. For you know games that have come out this year, and I mean, you and I have gone back and forth personally about like you know things launching and what it feels like an unfinished state. This game just felt like it it was refined to the bone, man. And as as a gamer, you know, as someone who loves you know these kinds of games, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. So the biggest ten out of ten in in my twenty twenty two game of the year. Yeah, the, it's funny because when we were talking about COD and how there were some glitches and stuff, I was like. I don't remember any glitches at all with any of these games like that. So, and this is definitely like the example of what a perfect game should be right out the gate. Um, with that stuff being said though, guys, we are going to talk some spoilers now. Um, so yeah, if you haven't played this game or haven't finished it, definitely come back after this and you can kind of dive deep in what we thought of it. Um, and as always, before we get started with the spoilers, please don't forget to give us a like, uh, ring the bell, and of course, subscribe. We, we appreciate it. We want to show our support for you guys like you show us with the views. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, but let's get started, shall we? Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you want to start with, Burn? What, what do you want to what do you want to get your thoughts out on now? <laughs> I mean, I guess we can just start, you know, like right, right at the the base of it all you know the story what what, what were your thoughts of like you know what, what the trajectory of the story went you know how how it played out like was it what you were expecting you know because because this is a huge game i don't, I don't know what um your full play time because i know you more mainlined the story more than than i did I, I went and did a lot of the side missions and stuff before i finished the game so my like total play time was around like the 60 hour mark you know by the time i rolled credits on it so you know, it is a huge game, but um, yeah, like what what stuck out to you in 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 the story? Like, where did like I said, did did it like meet your expectations on like uh, certain things? But like, did did it were you able to predict it? Like, I I was not. This this game has a lot of twists and turns, and I couldn't have told you what what happens at by the end of this game. <laughs> so no, I mean, I how do I explain this? I have my kind of pre-notion of what was going to happen, sort of, like, my envision of what I wanted for it. But honestly, they did it so well. I was like, man, this is way better than I think anyone could truly comprehend it. Because how much more in-depth they went, the new characters they added to it. And um, and they did it so well to the point where you didn't really, didn't really want to question anything. There was nothing I could really think of, like, how the fuck did this happen? Or who is this person? Or what is this thing now? Um, it's, it's just such a, such a great story. It's it's literally as uh, they did everything great with it. I think um, I think it's better that Atreus, like the voice actor, did kind of mature a little because I liked Atreus a lot more in this game than I did the last one. And I think I know he still annoyed a lot of people, the fan base and stuff. I'm like, I I liked him way better. He was actually a little more competent. Like he's in a, he's growing up. He's finding his way. And I think they did that beautifully. And you know what they did with Kratos, uh, really just fleshing him out more seeing more about his relationship with Faye aka Laufey uh, was was awesome and then when they bring in 
the big dogs like Thor and Odin into it. It was like, ah, oh, shit, this is good too. Like, yeah, given they didn't have like the that that opening man, of best, that, of their their like table talk together best was amazing. opening <laughs> and introduction of any characters ever, ever. That was just amazing. You know, just Thor, like the perfect uh, how the last game ended on that prologue of, you know, a man causing like lightning in the storm outside, standing with the cloak on, and then just who are you? Th- puts puts aside, and you see that shot of him in the hammer. I was like, oh, that's Thor. Like, oh shit. Given because the last game they did kill his sons Modi and um, oh, what the fuck was the other guy's name? Bro, was it Brock? No, no, Brock is the uh, Sindri's brother. No, um, Modi, Mag- Ma- Modi, yeah, Maggie and Modi. Yeah. Those two dipshits. Um, and yeah, dude, it was, it was such a good story. Their growth and everything about it, the way... It, and I, I, there were a lot of things I could never predict. I, I couldn't... Some of the ones, especially with Tear, did not see that coming at all. Um, yeah, like I said, it was just... It was it caught me by surprise. It, it pulled the heartstrings very well. Just, again, great story. What, what did you think of it, though? You said you were able to predict some stuff or no? Okay. No, no, no. I wasn't able to predict anything, okay. really. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I was very surprised about was the way they handled uh, Ragnarok, like like itself. Like, really, you know, like the, the game is called God of War Ragnarok. So the whole time you're playing through, you're like, okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen now, like at any minute. But <laughs> really, it doesn't happen until until the very end. You know, like, like that that's the last mission of the game is when, like, Ragnarok's happening. So I was, I was very surprised by that, that... You know, the game itself is called God of War Ragnarok, but really the story is not so much about that as, as it is about, you know, the relationship between Atreus and, and, and uh, Kratos, you know, like them both. Like, I, the one thing that I didn't really predict was they were, like, trying to find a way to prevent it. You know, like that Ragnarok was something that they didn't want to happen that they caused at the end of the last game by killing Baldur. So, you know, going into like thinking of it as a God of War story, we're like, okay, you know, they're going to they're going to start, you know, Ragnarok and they're going to go and kill all the Norse gods. And that's what the story is going to be. Right. But this whole idea of them, you know, wanting so much for that to not happen, you know, them being like very afraid of that, that coming uh, what they think is, you know, the end of all the realms like. That was that was really interesting. That was a, that was a really cool framing of it all. Instead of them, you know, marching, you know, head on into Ragnarok, they were doing as much as they could to like not allow that to happen. Yeah, and, and again, that but that's why I loved it so much. Is that that was kind of my initial thoughts because that's what the other God of War was, were about. The original three, where he just completely decimated the Greek pantheon because he was done with the gods and all that bullshit. So I thought, oh, it's going to be the same thing. But this one, yeah, I think it was a much more natural feeling that he's not trying to put him and his son in danger anymore. He's trying not to be a god of war. He's just trying to live his life quietly. And that's kind of what he's always wanted to do, especially at least in um, where he's at in Norse myth- in the Norse mythology, the lands of Norse, essentially, that he's just trying to live a peaceful life. But in the end, and that's why I loved about this, the central theme to this was fate. No matter what you can do, what you do to... I mean, again, they kind of did avoid it in the end. They changed their own fates and stuff like that. But actually, not even they even for all them changing Ragnarok, they still followed the same fate that Laufey created for them. So it's still like it's it's very ironic that you know you try and stop something from happening, but in the end, you doing that causes it to happen. So I love that they continue with that. That was that was just so just awesome. And the ending, the ending, which we'll talk about in a little bit when we're done, was so great. I was like, God damn it. Why is this game so good? What, who, no game deserves to be this good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that 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 whole you know central theme of, of of fate and do we have control over it? You know, like w- what is like destiny if not a compilation of all our decisions? You know that we made along the way. Um, you know them meeting the 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 Norns. I, I believe is what they're called. You know, they're not the Fates, right? They're that's essentially the, the Greek yeah. Version. They're essentially the Norse the Norse Fates, but yeah, the Norns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that whole scene where where they break it down, like you know, fate, you know, like your your destiny isn't like written as much as it is predicted. You know, like you're, you know, we're as people so predictable in our decision makings that you know the, those you know three beings in that universe are able to. They were scary you know, guess. As shit, especially the one they kept repeating mm-hmm. and walking by. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, why the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, that's such a like interesting idea where yeah, like throughout the the entirety of the game, they're like 
again trying to prevent Ragnarok when it's written that you know it's gonna happen and, and they have a hand to play in it and every decision they make to try to avoid it like, like you said only pushes that further but you know they're able to, to circumvent that like in in the smallest of ways but ways enough that make it um uh, important to to the characters themselves like you know we don't like the Kratos's fate is not what we all thought going in and and I really liked how the the core of the relationship between Atreus and and, and Kratos in this game was they were both you know the, the last game was them like developing a relationship you know they were very estranged like it seemed like like uh um uh, Laufey was or, or Faye you know the the mother was the real one that would sort of like bridge the gap between those two like they never really meshed well and and the last game was them you know getting to that point of having a, a healthy father-son relationship and what i liked about it here is you know in the second game it didn't fall into that sort of cliche where it's like oh they have a good relationship now they have a falling out because they disagree or or like have a, a difference of opinion on something and they, they like the way that they write around that i liked how you know, this game was so much about them being afraid of what, you know, the outcome that they saw at the end of the last game was. So that's sort of fueling them. Like, they, they love each other so much, they want to protect each other. And that inadvertently starts to, like, drive them apart. I thought that was so good. Yeah, it was, it was again, it felt so organic. And that's just the beauty of the writing, that it was constant disagreement. And it wasn't just a father and son. It was almost like two men trying to just navigate their futures in this so that was it felt very natural and um it was just yeah it was just well done it didn't fall into a cliche of just the son completely being rebellious of everything like he knows that his father has kind of gone through this but at the same time he's still young he's he's a kid he doesn't know any better he's he's trying to find his own way and yeah it was it was a typical story in a way that a father's just trying not to lose his son but he kind of drives him away at a certain point um but the way it ended off was just again so heartwarming that it was like wow, this is again perfect. I I can't say that enough about this game. Yeah, I mean this it's just it's just so like the, the ending feels so earned, you know. And I, and I feel like I think we could we can now talk. Yeah, about go it, you know, ahead. Just start let's start talking about it. <laughs> You know, like, they, they end up, you know, Kratos doesn't die. You know, that's one of the things that we were expecting going in. You know, the characters were expecting it, too. So there was that sort of, like, Ludo narrative, like, the absence of Ludo narrative dissonance. You know, like, we thought about it, and the characters were thinking about it, too, at the same time. But uh, when we get to that point, we know when they're f the final confrontation with Odin, you know, when Ragnarok's happening, and, 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 you know, Loki is able, or Atreus is able to, you know, do the whole soul thing uh with with odin it's like oh my gosh like it, it was so good because that moment like feels so earned because the characters you know might, right when they reach that point they're they're able to do what what you know, they're basically their mantra is which is you know throughout the last game in this one which is be better you know like where they're able to make decisions that not the, not ones that they normally would the easy decision or the ones that they think it's like what they should be doing but they're able to make the hard choices you know at the end of the day and and you know with uh with kratos it seems like hit with him you know sparing thor and with them like not trying to destroy asgard but then you know saving the people from it you know and trying to like help them out that sort of was able to change their fate just enough to where like you know they didn't die but they were like like you said the thing the way you know things play out like how we expected them to but just not with the people that we were expecting it to happen to yeah exactly um the way it ended, yeah, it was very smart that the, not only were they being better, but I like that his whole, you know, rallying speech for the troops and stuff was that we have come here for vengeance and that's, if we die for it, then we die for it. Like, we, we can't, we're kind of done being like that, but when they realize their destruction is also hurting innocent people, both mid-guardians and Asgardians on the wall, like, mostly the mid-guardian, the mid, the humans on the wall of uh, Asgard, it's like, shit. Okay, maybe we can't do this. We shouldn't be doing this for vengeance. Like we gotta, we gotta catch ourselves and realize that our actions do hurt the people, and we can't keep that up. So, and then him uh, saving Odin's like soul into the cute, the little uh, marble was like, damn, Atreus, that's pretty adult of you. You kind of mercy gave him a mercy death a little bit with that, like imprisoning him. Uh, and then Sindri just out of anger just smashes it, and it's like, yeah, well, somebody had to do it. Like you know. And that was such a sad story for Brock and Sindri. I didn't... It's funny that some of the best stories have the side characters that you think are just there for comic relief or, you know, helpful stuff, but really 
they get fleshed out, and that's exactly what happened with this game. So that's another reason why I loved it, just seeing them a part of this more understanding that Brock isn't a completely... He isn't completely dwarf where he doesn't have all of his soul because Sindri couldn't get all of it. But Sindri is, was like very selfish in bringing him back from the dead and keeping him around. But then when he dies because Odin kills him, I was like, fuck! And that was also quite great too that Sindri just completely went off the chain and just decided to just completely not be a, a meek, lovable, laughable person. He is like deathly serious and completely hateful. And it's like... It was bittersweet, but it was, again, just great progression of that. And the ending with the funeral was... It was a bummer that he could they couldn't reconcile with Sindri. No matter how many times they tried in, in the end, it was just... It's never going to be enough. And Mimir just like, sometimes it'll... Like, we just... It'll take time for him to come around, essentially. It's like, yeah, I guess. But, yeah. No, I, I love the... I love the the be be- the whole idea mm-hmm. of just being better than what you tr- than what your nature inclines, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, that that whole that whole you know subplot with you know uh, Sindri and and Brock was was just like you said it was it was very sad. You know, it was, it's an interesting play on like the merchant characters. You know that we get a lot in video games. You know the one that sell you loot or the ones that upgrade your armor or give you weapons and stuff. They're, they're they're characterizing them in this game, and when I realized what was happening, I was like, "Wow, that's that's such a that's such a, such a great take." You know, that's something we don't we don't even think about in other games. You know, we're like, oh, "Okay, the merchant, I'm gonna sell my stuff, I'm gonna buy some stuff, I'm gonna upgrade whatever." You know, we don't think twice about it, and how they wrap that into the narrative of of, of Sindri in particular, where by the end of it, like you know, what what he's saying to to Atreus, how he's like, "I've just given you everything, and you just kept taking and taking and taking and." And this this is what happens, you know. Like you you've taken everything that I have to offer. It's, it was just so sad, you know. It was not it where I was expecting that character of Sindri to go, you know. When, when we first meet him as that the germaphobe dwarf, you know, the comedic relief character, and and to see where he ends up, and, you know, him and Brock's story is just it's just very sad. And and it goes and it, and it all goes back to a, a line that Kratos says in the beginning of the game, where in um where you know uh, <laughs> what's his name Atreus when he t- and accidentally turns into the bear and he kills that mother bear mm-hmm. and we see the two cubs where Kratos says, you know, intent does not matter. Uh, only consequences. So I- I'm I'm glad this game had consequences to it. You know, it made the story feel real and it had gave it some weight, you know. And, and although we love these characters, you know, that they, they get pulled into the story that, you know, they're they're in danger you know it adds a level of 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 danger to the story and it's not like okay everyone's going to be just fine you know like these characters nothing's going to happen to them um it's it it adds a lot more realism to it and and it makes it heavy and dramatic and and those those two characters in particular were were really well done and that scene with with brock and and kratos when he when they make the spear and he has them bless it it was just such a great character moment, and, and again, it just makes his death even sadder because we know that that Kratos, you know, this guy who's closed off to everyone, had a genuine connection with you know this dwarf, and 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 Atreus had a connection with Sindri. So to have that relationship break apart by the end of this game was was devastating. Yeah, that was that was this was the first game too where Kratos, like when you read the journals about Mimir and Brock, and when he. At the funeral, he tells Brock. He tells Brock's corpse, like you're the fir- you're one of the few people I considered a friend. Like, I'll miss you. Like this, like essentially, that's like a normal person saying, like, my God, like I love you, and it's never gonna be the same without you. And he he calls Mimir in his journal, like, oh, this is someone I almost consider a brother. And it's like, damn, like Kratos, you're actually kind of showing more emotion than you ever have before, not in in a positive way. Like he's showing that he's actually starting to become more compassionate and more open to that so I, I thought that was really good um other than that like i said man i i can't i can talk all day about the story and stuff unfortunately we don't have all day though what um was there anything else you wanted to t- talk about because i did want to get to uh some character design stuff it's up to you <laughs> i mean yeah yeah I mean, we, we can we can get to the characters and stuff i mean the the ending was was great you know to the game you know we had the wrap of their stories and you know atreus goes off you know and to do his journey and stuff with uh maybe possibly Angraboda, which was a great character but i think we'll probably talk about you know characters you know in more in depth coming up now but but yeah where, where it ends here was was just so beautiful and uh 
and yeah, I just I, I'm curious where they would even go after this. Like, I, I have no idea. I mean, shit. Like, I don't know. I, I wish we could stay in Norse mythology, but at the same time, like, Thor and Odin are gone. Like, the essentially the Norse. I, I mean, I wish we kind of explored a couple more of the Norse gods, but at the same time, I don't know too much about Norse mythology. Where if we if that was pretty much it, and we maybe covered all the bases, I'm not sure. But I would love to see him personally go into like either um, like maybe Japanese mythology or or Mayans would be a really cool one. Somebody brought that up, especially after Wakanda Forever. It's like, ooh, that would that would be an interesting trip. I would uh, see him in nice and sunnier lands and stuff like that. He could, he could use a tan, I'm not going to lie. But um, <laughs> he's haunting us with his whiteness. Not really. But yeah, the way it ended was so well done. Just them stopping Ragnarok essentially well, I mean they did and they didn't because Asgard still kind of went to pieces a little bit with uh, Surtur becoming Ragnarok but yeah him accepting that um, Loki was going to go off on his own to find the other giant souls essentially to try and bring him back whether through animals or just find him that was that was good very hard to see that go just because it's for the last two games it's been father and son and now it's like shit you gotta let him go now and I, I, what I also really loved is when he opened up the other side of that mural. And it's it's the same story of the game, but it ends with him being a god that's loved. Because that's the whole question with this this game is that, have you ever been a god? you ever been loved? Like, have you ever been worshipped like we have? Like, you don't know what that's like. And then he looks at it and, like, his wife, because his wife knew, like, Laufey knew you are someone to be loved and to be, you know, cared for and, and looked up to like even um freya when she made him general of the army even though he's like you command these people you they they like care for you more it's like i don't care about that i need a leader and that's what i i like that it was just like he was kind of choked up like wow she had way more faith in me than i did so that was just just great ending yeah, and and again, it's just the, the 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 all the decisions of you know being better. It it shows that you know he can achieve something that he didn't even think possible. Going from this vengeful killer, you know, the ghost of Sparta, to to an actual like god of war. And you know, it seems like his story here took the place of what we were expecting the real tier, you know, to take place. You know, he was able to bring everyone together through his actions, and and potentially by the end, of, you know, at the end of the game, you know, rebuild the realms and into something hopefully that it's a a lot better under <laughs> Odin's rule. <laughs> so, so yeah, just the, you know, the idea of him being an actual like god and and someone that's in service to like people and stuff. That's that's just an amazing amazing progression from where he started as a character to you know where he is now and. It's, it's it's great. And I'm so glad you brought it up, because let me start talking about the characters now. Oh, my God. This... Uh, again, I can't... I know I said perfect like 50,000 times, but the the main family, Norse family, where it'd be Baldur, Freya, um, Odin, but Thor and his... and Sif and Thrun, and even his sons looking back, like now having seen Thor and Th- um, Thor and Sif, like as husband and wife, and seeing their kids, I'm like... Holy shit, that is perfection right there. Just perfect character design, especially for him, where I know a lot of people were making fun of, like, Fat Thor and stuff, and then when this when they had showed the picture of him, like, the character poster, it's like, no, that's actually what Thor's supposed to be like in mythology. He's not supposed to be a ripped, like, handsome dude. He's a very much like a Viking, like, strong man. And I remember one guy, a couple of articles were flying around that somebody said, no, that is the peak of human physical condition peak fitness where he's supposed to be big burly because he loves to drink and he's he is a, he is more of a god of war than sounds of it tear and uh i forgot who else was um and there's the red hair i remember i was like what he has red hair what is this but you're like no no that's how he's supposed to be i was like oh okay it grew on me though and ryan hurst is such a good actor he was perfect for this I, and i loved that one of the biggest things i was praising when we first started playing it was like i love that every character looks like their actor like odin that is richard schiff right there ryan hurst he looks fat like thor that was awesome um who else i was trying to there was a couple other characters i was thinking like my god they look exactly like that it's crazy but when those two came on like we talked about in the beginning i was like oh, this is awesome like and then odin instead of being kind of like um 
all armored up and like definitely looks like a king. He looked more and had a demeanor of like a mob boss, like the smart, the wise guy of the whole family. And the god, yeah, just the godfather essentially. And it was just so great. And Melanir's hammer, even though it's more, it looked more like a war hammer than it did a, a traditional like work hammer thing. So that's why I really loved about it. And just again, continuing the whole Norse, the Celtic tattoos and everything on him, it was just perfection perfection bernie i mean yeah the dude the, the designs of, of every character was was so good here but yeah those two in particular you know odin and, and thor you know characters that we we heard, only heard about in in the 2018 game where you know we were reading about them on like different shrines or you know mimir's telling us stories about them and how they're two very despicable people and you know, meeting them within the first hour of this game was just so great. Like you said, Richard Schiff, dude, what a great take on, on the Odin character. Like, I, I, I didn't know who was going to be Odin, you know, going into it. I didn't really, like, I stayed away from as much spoiler stuff like, I, as I could, you know. Like, not really, like, looking too much into the game other than just, like, a trailer or two that didn't, like, show us basically anything. But, you know, when Richard Schiff showed up, I was initially like, hmm, that, 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 that's not someone who I would have picked as Odin, but... As that scene progresses, you know, with them all having that discussion together, I was immediately won over. And by the end of this game, he's my favorite interpretation of Odin. I mean, no, no, no bad mouthing to Anthony Hopkins. I thought he was really fun for what he did, you know, in his portrayal of Odin. But, but man, Richard Schiff really, like you said, embodied that sort of mob boss type, you know, like that smooth talking guy. Like, like, like he's legitimately like a snake of a person, you know, very manipulative and. And with his family, especially, like it's just so horrible. And and yeah, like Ryan Hurst is, has store as that you know that big the muscle you know the one that's quiet and and tormented. You know, I was expecting him to just be a very like arch you know like very just like, you know it just yeah. just it's like loving just slaughtering people. But what we get here is is a character who's just so broken by his own father that he resorts to drinking and and his relationship with his own family suffering for it the, all that dimension i was not expecting for these two characters who again in the other game we only heard were just awful people but yeah. these two guys were great yeah thor was a very complicated character because yeah in the beginning he did want to kill kratos he he was ready he but then as as when atreus went to asgard met them and and when he met Thrud, which was also just awesome, I love Thor's and whole his his immediate family was fantastically designed. Just and when you see the kids, it's like oh my god, I see bits. Like when you see which one was Magni, the blonde one, or was he the the or was that Modi? Do you remember? Yeah, I, be I believe Magni was the blonde one, and Modi was the the more like Modi was hair, like bearded. Modi one. was a miniature Thor, and Magni was a lot like his mom, just blonde, but he had his father's size and everything. Um, that was so great, and through it is just a perfect combo of them with the big old red hair. She kind of reminded me of Brave a little bit, and her blades, how they were like Melnir that you couldn't lift them unless you're worthy, um, and that, that she wanted to be a Valkyrie, and uh, Sif was just a great matriarch. But I was gonna say with Thor, it's great that we find that you he's going through sobriety. He's trying to be sober. He's not trying to be just this hitman for his father. This muscle that just totally destroys everything that needs to happen. That he is trying to be better for his family, and Sif kept telling him, "You you gotta stand up to him. We can't be doing this. He's look what he's doing to our family and to you." And that scene when he does get back to drinking after Heimdall died, that was like, "Oh, buddy, this is this isn't you." Like, and Thrud's disappointment as a daughter was so well just translated into their dialogue and the emotion, the um, the emoting that the characters created, like the cap motion capture was great. So I love their design and. Just um, like it, yeah, like you said, Richard Schiff, man, just uh, his big old cape made him look more massive than he is. It's like you're, you're not that big, dude. That's just the, that's the cloak doing it. But that was the whole point. He didn't need to show it off. He just did it just to be, just to be a king and remind people like this is, this is why I'm here. You know, then you guys better bow down to us. Um, and then what else? I also did love what they did with the um. The Lady of the Water, the 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 Master of the Forge, that when they go to see for the drop the oh, drop near drop near is that yeah the drop near drop spear. near spear it's just it's, it's weird that they rhyme but the drop near spear 
and that I love that they did that. She's a mermaid. I thought that was really cool, and because it's not the it's not the form that it takes, but the nature of the forge. Because he kept saying that it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? But she crafts the spear in water because again, it's not about where you're at. It's what you can do in your environment. So that was that was really cool. Um, and then the creature design with like the Drecky, that giant alligator looking thing. And then the, the Nithog or something, I forgot. But basically the tree worm, which was super cool and super fun to fight. I did wish there was a dragon in there, but I like that they talked about where Heimdall's like, oh, yeah, well, Balder was an idiot. Of course he could tame a dragon. I, t- I have this creature. Like, this is what I understand. Like, he was a fool or something. It's like, Heimdall was a dick. Even though I hated him, his, his design <laughs> suited him very well, that he just... A dipshit person, such a know-it-all, because he kind of was all-seeing a little bit. But, oh, yeah. just another... He is a perfect villain. Someone I'm glad that Kratos killed. I was like, oh, that's what you get. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, that's one where the performance and the, the design really, like, meshed well to make this character that I... By the end of it, I was like, I was just like Kratos. Like when Kratos was like just pummeling him, I was like, yes, like I was <laughs> just taking so much pleasure out of it. Even though I knew, you know, killing Heimdall would would only just, you know, absolutely just, just you know make sure that Ragnarok does happen. I was like, as much as I was like, no, I don't want you know that to to go down. I just hated that character so much. By the end of it, I was like, that little do shit it. had it coming. <laughs> Oh, man. But other than that, dude, just the designs behind... This team should needs to win... This this is a game where I'm like, they need to win Academy Academy Awards just on design alone. And it would be so crazy to see all this live action. Like, oh, my God. Just fantastic. I, I, any any other character or anything that, like, popped out at you that you were like, wow, that's exactly what I imagined or more better than I could imagine? You know the 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 one character that surprised me a, a lot was uh, was Freya. She was so good, and like she has like a few different outfits that you get like throughout the game, and, and one in particular after you after you complete a side mission. I don't know. I don't think you've done any of those like side missions, but needless to say, the the Valkyrie fight comes back in in a certain way. But yeah, like her as a companion character, that was another thing I was not expecting that we would like she would be like with you on missions and stuff. And I was like, whoa, that's that's crazy. You know, again, that that whole story of her wanting revenge for Baldur's death, but then, you know, coming back around on, you know, Kratos wasn't the one that drove, you know, this all to happen. It was Odin, you know, so she becomes a. Uh, a reluctant ally and then by the end of it like you know there's a certain respect that her and Kratos have uh, towards each other but you know her throughout the game was just so cool and like her armor and stuff that was that was really good and incredibly well acted too like I think she has a lot of really big scenes in the game and and she was great like I really liked Freya a lot and and I was like by the end of it when it's like you and her going on adventures together I was like I could cool you know like i i love i love atreus you know I, but it's like okay you know he has his own journey to go on to if we're going to get this, the the ventures of, of kratos and, and freya from now on i'm down they need to make a baby that's all i gotta say i was i mean <laughs> it's funny because it's like we a lot of people try and avoid the whole romantic tropes of some of these characters but i'm like Atreus and Angerboda or Atreus and Thrud, I'm like, man, I want those ships to sail. I want them to form a thing. I want to. I was like, get it, Atreus. Be a man. Be a man. <laughs> get some. Uh, but it didn't happen because it's like, you know what? He's He's got more important pressing things on his mind. And then Freya and Kratos is just, yeah, it's that mutual respect. But I wouldn't be surprised if they do get together, if we do continue the games with them. Or she just kind of remains to be the queen of like Norse, like the Norse lands, essentially. I don't know. I don't know how they could end it off. But um, the other thing that really got me, both story wise and character wise, was Fenrir. That was another thing that I really loved. Was you know because in Norse mythology, Fenrir is one of Loki's children, like the giant wolf, especially from Thor Ragnarok. That's supposed to be kind of one of his. And when he dies in the beginning, that was so heartbreaking. It was like fuck, like. This kid just can't catch a break. He's always training. His dog dies. And then, you know, but he, but I like that he realized, oh, I think Fenrir's soul is in my knife. And so when they go to see Garm, which was super horrifying, but also really cool, stabs him with it. And it's just like, Fenrir, you're alive. It just, I love when Kratos just says, sit. He just, the giant dog just, <clears throat> like, it's like you're, you're bigger than everything there. You don't have to do this for it. 
I just again that was that was such a great that was one of my favorite additions character wise and I like the two wolves they had to make to mush their sled those are also massive creatures too but just fantastic game and all that stuff mm-hmm. yeah like the the big creatures in, in particular were so cool like you said Gar when we're fighting him was cool and then you know turning into Fenrir was was really dope and and as you mentioned earlier Needhog you know the, the giant you know tree worm. That was such a really cool design for that thing too. Like, it was, and then, you know, the big the big monster battles is kind of like what we come to, to God of War for. You know, I know especially in in God of War three, that was like a really big thing. But uh, and, uh, just to like uh, go off your point earlier, there are there are dragon fights out there. You just gotta you gotta. Oh, find there is. Them. Okay, they're, good. They're, <laughs> they're they're relegated to 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 side content, so definitely go go check that out. I, I know there's a there's a lot to do when when the game is over, so. Do some exploring, and you'll you'll get your dragon fights for sure. <laughs> yeah, because that dragon the last one was really neat. Um, so I'll de- I will definitely. I just like I said, I was just trying to get through it so we could talk about it and stuff like that. But um, what else? And then Anger Boda, she was great. Reminded me a lot of Zendaya, even though I know like I know it's not the same design, but that's uh, the vibes I got, kind of like in Dune and and Spider Man stuff. But she was so she was so great, such a great like help to Atreus to really help him realize like listen you don't have to follow like even though she's like this is fate you you know it is what it is you can fight it or go on or just embrace it you know that there is no way to do it but i like that he was they i like that they influenced each other so i I, she was so her scenes were really fun with him and when they go fight her grandmother i was like oh shit that's that's a giant right there you guys are giants you guys are a little tiny little specks to her but yeah like i said everybody was awesome and Oh, man, I don't know. Like I said, I I feel like I'm a run on a giant run on sentence talking about it, but I loved it so much. I can't help it. Yeah, I mean their their moments together were were so good. I was not expecting you know in in the big sections of this game to be playing as uh, Atreus and and going on like adventures with him, whether it be with Angraboda or whether it would be you know in Asgard with either Odin or you know the, the Thor family. That or was, That was all really cool. Or or Sindri, yeah, the, those those moments were great when you you two are all uh, you know out there you know, doing missions together. That was that was all really great stuff. And you know, it's a, it's again, it's a, it's another building off of what the last game established. Where the last game, I think it really perfected the sort of companion character. You know, the ones that they're either you you're either like escorting, like you know, whether it be you know like Joel and Ellie in the first Last of Us. You know, where they're not so very capable or even worse than that Resident Evil 4 with Leon and, and Ashley where she was just a detriment to you to you at every turn it felt like <laughs> in, in the last game you know <laughs> you know Atreus felt by the end of the game an integral part in the combat and and to you know again build up off of that and give make you play as him and he has his own skill tree and all that stuff it's just so good and I, I i had a lot of fun playing as as atreus and that was something i wasn't expecting to to like when initially we were given that oh wow we're gonna play as him i was like ah but i like kratos so much by the end of it i was like give me more i want to play as atreus more yeah him transforming the animals is great whether it be bjorn the bear or that wolf version of his those were those were super fun um yeah like i said i, I couldn't just fantastic uh I can't. I, it's it's hard to believe I finished it already. I'm like, god damn! I'm gonna have to go play it again. Hopefully, they do a story plus mode soon, so I can just completely dominate everything. I'm sure they'll make it tough for me because I'm I'm god, but it's fine. Um, what else did you want to talk about regarding the game, my dude? I mean, that that's pretty much that all I had to say. Like you, I'm I'm very excited to to you know jump back into the game again i hopefully they add that new game plus mode you know it, it within the next few months because you know by the end of it you you collect a, like so much like different gear and and like different attachments for your weapons and your amulet slots like there's like like the, the combat in this game is, is is so you know big you know there's so many like different combinations that you can do whether it be with certain armor sets and different shields you know and, and different abilities that you can use like it just makes me want to play the game you know like constantly so you know there, there are times where i'll just jump into into musfelheim and, and run the trials you know where they just throw waves of enemies at you because i just want to 
partake partake in the combat, which is just so fun. And at the end of the day, a, a game is something you play, you know, not something you watch. You know, so as good as the cinematics and, and the story is, like, it comes down to, you know, does is a gameplay match that? And and the gameplay is so much fun, dude. Once we get that drop near spear, that was just like. Amazing. Oh, I mean, I like love that shit weapon out of that so weapon. much. <laughs> but my my go to weapon was the Blades of Chaos, man. That was my if I need to take care of a bunch of people at once, that's what I'm using. Just because the range on those things was was so good. But that spear, it felt pretty fitting that Kratos, after all these games being from Sparta, he finally got a spear and he had a shield. And I man mainlined the shield that you could run into and shield crush somebody. So I was like, yes, like. So, uh, Sparta, just go after it. <laughs> so that was that was so good that they added that man. Yeah, it was more the the parry shield. Parry shield was the one I went with. So it was either parry shield and, and the axe, or or by the end of it, I was just you know like mainlining the spear, especially with the whole you know uh, ability uh, uh suck out of them. It's like, like take the Bifrost and just beat people up with it and blow them up. I was like. This is great. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's just, again, it's just so much fun to play in the combat. It's so crunchy and satisfying. You know, they added a lot more uh, enemy variety, which, again, I said was uh, was a big uh, complaint from the first game because it felt like you were just fighting these big, you know, trolls all the time. <laughs> and this one is like every different realm has, you know, their own different enemies. And, you know, just tearing them apart was, was endlessly interesting. <laughs> it truly was, Amigo. It truly was. But, oh, man. Like I said, for those stuck around for the spoilers and played this game, what was your favorite part of it? Who was your favorite character? What was your favorite mission or path, as I would say? Um, you know, just or like, was there stuff you wanted to see more of that you felt like it was lacking? We'd love to know and keep the conversation going on that. And, ah, uh, man, it's hard to believe 2022 is almost over already. And yeah, like it, there's actually a lot of good stuff on streaming right now. Like I just finished Wednesday and now I'm watching Cabinet of Curiosities. And then we talked about Pinocchio. So if you haven't checked out that one by Guillermo del Toro, uh, check out that review as well. But until next time, guys, as always, thank you so much for, uh, for the views and uh, stay bodacious and keep on ranting for the both of us. Absolutely, everybody. Be good, be safe, and this time, be better.